All right, and we are live at Chicago Land Speedway, and uh, we uh, are going to have a little kind of a short show. We're about 42 seconds away from uh, flipping over to race mode, guys. So uh, Chicago Land Speedway, we were supposed to be at Dover tonight, had some uh, issues at the track, and uh, we all climbed into the ETV Live jet and uh, flew on over here to uh, Joliet, Illinois. And uh, Tracy, uh, you know, we'll go down through the points, and uh, we do have some picks uh, for you later on. We could possibly go through that uh, at the beginning here as soon as qualifying is over with. Yeah, we can probably go through that as I'm watching qualifying. And so far, right at the moment, the 42 of Kevin Brents was just on the pole. He just got bumped by the 70 of Jesse Racimus with a blistering time of 29.979, J.D., Yeah, you bet. Uh, you know, Racimus has always been fast here, and looks like uh, looks like that's going to set the order right there. Racimus and Brent's on the front row. Racimus with a uh, ultra fast lap there, almost uh, looks like about uh, I don't know about uh, maybe uh, two hundredths off of uh, Racimus's uh, qualifying. Yeah, I tell you what, what a lap that was! A great lap with him being in the get in the twenty sub thirty second lap. Tell you what, that was awful. Great, great lap he put on. I tell you what, we got starting third and fourth tonight. That second row is the 16 of Lint and the 27 of Mulliken. And I tell you, that other driver we were talking about for even Dover, the 7 of James Greegate, he was right there with that group, JD. Tonight uh, made it up to the top. Of course, our picks. Uh Going over the list here, uh, of course, we're at a different track tonight, so maybe we better not even put those names up on the board tonight. So, <laughs> I know uh, Jesse Racimus is uh, usually a pretty pretty much a front runner here. Uh, so is Kevin Brents. Kyle Lent has uh, been doing a fantastic job here uh, in the Nation uh, Pro Series. And, of course, Larry Malkin. Larry Malkin uh, always performs well no matter where he goes. But it uh, looks like we're uh, about to uh, take the grid here. And starting out on the pole, talked about him here just a little bit, 70 of Jesse Racimus. Starting second tonight, the number 42 of Kevin Brent. And waiting to uh, move his car out on the on the grid, starting in third tonight, Kyle Lent. Starting fourth, the 27 of Larry Mulligan. James Grigate starting in fifth. Starting in sixth tonight, the 37 of Jay Bunn. Frankie Samanto starting in seventh. Starting 8th tonight, the number 8 of Dave Hoot. And 55, Dwayne Hall, starting in ninth. Starting 10th tonight, the number 77 of Jason Krause. Frank Jockman, starting in 11th. Starting in 12th tonight, the number 47 of Roger Hager. And returning champion, hold on post champion, Dan White, starting 13th. Starting 14th tonight, the number 3 of Hal Beardworth. Tom Pazinski will be starting in 15th. Starting 16th, the number 33 of Jerry Hinkle. And starting 17th, Howard Pittman. Starting 18th tonight, the 65 of Sean Brown. 21 of Tony Bowling, smoking Tony Bowling, starting 19th. Starting 20th and 20th spot of the number 15 of Brian Pace. And last season's championship driver, the 96 of Jason Riddle, starting 21st tonight. And rolling up the field from the rear, the number 35, the counselor, Joe DePino. All right, and uh, I think we're doing 100 laps here at Chicagoland Speedway tonight. And uh, I'll tell you what we can do here a little bit later in the show, rather than going through the picks that we have put together for Dover, we can go through the points here. Uh, after uh, we get the green flag pace car pulling down onto pit road here, and we're set to go racing here in Juliet, Illinois, 100 laps at Chicago Speedway. Green, 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 green. And after they go taking off the green flag, we have a good start up front there, JD. Uh, side by side, heading into corner one. You know, well, watching these guys through uh, uh, practice and uh, qualifying here, uh, I know they had to travel quite a distance to come from uh, Delaware all the way over here to Chicago. But uh, they did, uh, you know, try to put something together here. 
did see some uh, some of these guys uh, spinning out, so uh, hopefully they uh, took notice of what was going on, and uh, we'll take it easy here in the first few laps. Always good to get uh, three or four laps under your belt, Tracy. Get those tires heated up, and uh, I thought you have to do a little bit of homework and research here, figure out uh, what we're doing as far as fuel and tires. But uh, I do know one thing. Uh, after about 15, 20 laps, uh, I know the right rear tire is going to get pretty hot, especially if you're running in that upper groove. Yeah, I tell you what, depending on how hard you drive the car, you're also going to burn off that right front tire, J.D. Uh, if you're overdriving it too hard into the corners, you're going to take your right rear out. If you're taking it a little easier and getting on the gas too soon exiting, you're going to burn your right front. So it's really going to change up. But I know me and you ran here on Saturday, and we had quite a few uh, self spins, J.D. You bet. It's a 33 right, car going around. Here's your first caution coming out here at Chicago Speedway. 33 car uh, Jerry Hinkle going around here, guys. He might have had some help on that one. Uh, I'll have to roll that one back in, in my monitor here and uh, see what was going on. Well, it looks like he uh, got a little piece of the apron uh, going across the start-finish line there, John, and just uh, went for a ride. Right in front of John Brown, who needs no bad luck here. He, he seems to find had trouble like a, a magnet here. 65 to 49 of uh, Frank Jacques went up there on the outside. Don't look like he's going to make any contact with anybody. Just a couple three. Say, oh, he might have hit Riddle here coming down. Oh, narrow miss by uh, Jason Riddle, that 96 car. That uh, doesn't make any contact, but I bet Jerry Hinkle's a little dizzy. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet he is going for a ride like that. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, just watching, just before that, watching the action in front of him, Hal Beardsworth uh, drifts up the track a little bit and just clips the uh, the front uh, the front right, or the front left of the uh, 49 Frank Jockman up there, almost uh, creating an upset. And I see, uh, it, looks like, it looks like the 33 car kind of makes a sudden move there. He probably saw that happening, and I wonder if that didn't set him up uh, for that contact with the apron, Tracy. Yeah, it's very, you know, get on that apron, it really upsets your car. Looks like you might have found one of them banana peels that falls out on the track once in a while, J.D. Banana peels, you bet. And uh, I'll tell you what, the first caution coming out here at Chicagoland Speedway on lap two. Jerry Hinkle bringing it out, but uh, looks like we've got a few takers down pit road. Like we've got quite a few takers for pit road there, J.D. Uh, a lot of guys can get them qual tires off and fill up the fuel and freshen the tires. You bet the uh, leader, Jesse Racinas, pole sitter tonight here at Chicago on Speedway. He stays out on the track, lump the 16 of uh, Kyle Lent, uh, the 50 or the uh, uh, 7 car of James Greegate, Larry Mulliken staying out. Uh, Dave Hooten staying out, Samanto staying out. Looks like a bunch of them stayed out. So about half the field, a uh, little, little bit less than half the field stayed out on this one. Yeah, your last year's champion of Jason Riddle uh, stayed out. That's 55 of Dwayne Hall, uh, 47 of uh, Haygood stayed out. So tell you what, we had quite a few cars stayed out. And Terry, Jason Riddle started way in the back. This is going to move him up, give some decent track position. Same with the 55 of Dwayne Hall, but. Tell you what, it's going to be kind of interesting to see how these uh, fresh tires, unlike the car, the 42 car has now, is going to be to these uh, slightly worn tires, J.D. Hey, but, uh, you know, I can't, uh, I'm trying to think okay, back. Uh, I don't have the Chicago yeah, stats with me anymore. I believe they're all in the trash, but, uh, and, and the trash is right behind me. I could probably dig through it and find them all, but uh, I don't recall what our caution average here at Chicago was. I want to say seven. Uh, that rings a bell, Tracy, but uh, I'm not quite uh, sure. Yeah, that's probably not too far off because, like I said, we do have a tend to have a people get loose in these corners, and uh, and it doesn't. It's not a loose that you can feel. It just all of a sudden happens. So uh, it's a matter of how they enter these corners. But yeah, seven sounds pretty pretty good for this track, JD. Yeah, hey, but I just uh, stick my hands down in my uh, my little trash can near my desk here, trying to look for the Chicago staff. But uh, only came up with a cannoli. Uh, only came up with a cannoli. Ah, you know, it, I I keep notes on a lot of stuff, Tracy, and uh, you know when I don't need it, I throw it away. But uh, caution average. Here we go. This is the sheet I was looking for. One sheet out of with about the 15 pages of notes that I did have. 
<laughs> Caution average is seven, yeah. and uh, we do have some stats. Kevin Brents, he's got two wins here, guys, along uh, with uh, Larry Mullican. Uh, he's uh, got three top tens, and uh, but finished no better than sixth here at Chicagoland. And uh, Tony Bowling, uh, he's got a couple of top tens, uh, sixth and seventh p- uh, place finishes here. And then uh, I think it's Dwayne Hall has uh, a top five and a top ten. And then uh, Chris Wilson, he has a win and a top five. But I uh, don't think I saw the 84 car in the lineup tonight. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, Chris Wilson, I think, this year. Uh, very possibly could be taking a season off. Uh, haven't really heard much out there, J.D. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure what's up with the 84 uh, car this season with the Halls on Post Monday Night Madness Series. But uh, i tell you what, uh, him and uh, Jason Rule duking it out last season. Boy, what a tight finish it was all the way all the way to the end. And, uh, of course, Chris uh, Chris Wilson uh, finishing second behind uh, Jason Riddle. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, Chris was pretty much leading the points there for quite some time. There were just a couple of hiccups that Chris had. Set him back, and uh, I think he I think he finished uh, something in the neighborhood of about 12 or 13 points behind Jason Riddle. Yeah, he had a lot, really rough last two races there, you know, blowing up at the road course with two laps to go, and then uh, having electrical issues there in the final race, JD. But tell you what, what a great season those two cars had fighting each other uh, the whole time. You bet. And we've already got the one to go here at Chicago on Speedway, so a single file restart here. And uh, pace car will be pulling off down pit road here just a momentarily uh, as we go into turn three. But uh, Tracy, uh, six laps in the books already. Of course, uh, three of those under caution. Caution coming out on lap two is the 33 car. Jerry Hinkle going around. Uh, contact with the apron there a little bit. 100 laps here at Chicagoland Speedway is uh, we're get to getting set to. Uh, Start it one more time here. Jesse Racine is going to pick up the green flag this time one more time. Kyle Lent, James Greegate, Larry Malkin, Dave Hoot, and for Dragon green, Motorsports green. make up your top five up here on this restart. Yeah, I tell you, we got a good restart. We'll see if anybody's able to fan out. And get in front of us and get them beside somebody with maybe a little bit of a different gear ratio. Looks like we're pretty much single car, single car heading through the one and two, J.D., you bet, and I'll tell you what, uh, wall banging Jesse Racimus out there in front. Going to keep an eye on him. Uh, he's uh, in familiar territory here at Chicagoland Speedway. He does he usually does pretty well here, but about 20 laps in or so, he'll start making contact with the wall. That's what uh, upset him. I think it was about a week ago, if I'm not mistaken, guys, uh, the last time we were here at Chicago, and uh, Jesse Racimus wound up having a pretty bad night. Yeah, I tell you what, Jesse Racimus usually gets his best nights and starting towards the back of the pack and taking it easy getting up there. Usually if he starts up front, you know, he's trying to run such a good pace with all these guys, get a little space on them, uh, that he gets his car starts to tight or he'll start getting loose and uh, just end up in that wall by the time it's all said and done. So hopefully maybe he's got a stable setup there, J.D., as uh, 42 gets around the 96 to take that position. bet and uh, I'm all the way back here in uh, 12th position back here keeping an eye on this number 3 Hal Beardsworth uh, he, uh, he had a kind of an ugly night at uh, Kentucky Speedway the other night wound up uh, getting uh, getting hooked up with a couple of, couple of banana peels out there as John called it at the Kentucky Speedway at the uh, benefit race on Friday night but the Hal Beardsworth uh, trying to keep it hooked up here at Chicago tonight yeah, the car looks pretty good, and uh setup seems pretty fast. But to see, get a few laps in the tires and let everybody get going as he gets, he's holding off that number four, Dan White. One of our movers coming from the back so far right now, J.D., is that 21 of Tony Bowling. He's made his way forward in uh, quite a few spots, J.D. You got Tony Bowling. Uh, you know, he would have been one of the picks here at Chicago tonight. He's got a couple of top tens. Uh, you know, not uh, kind of a mediocre finish, uh, no better than sixth place uh, in those top tens. Uh, finished sixth and seventh both times. But uh, Tony Bowling, I believe he's second in the standings here with the Halls on Post uh, Monday Night Madness Series, Tracy. So uh, well, I think we can probably expect some good things to come out of that 21 machine tonight. Yeah, and the 21 was also in that uh, race we had there Friday, the benefit race. 
And he uh, found the banana peels out there, J.D., and uh, he got around on his own a couple times. So hopefully they uh, maybe uh, fix that car for tonight's race and he won't have no issues and be able to get there and run at the leader, J.D. We've got Tony Bowling just moving past uh, the 49er Frank Jockman for uh, 14th place, but uh, pretty much single-file racing uh, as we go here. So uh, this might be... Uh, well, I'm kind of looking through here. Uh, this might be an opportune time to go down through the points here and at least uh, catch the top five and uh, before something happens. So uh, I'll tell you what, for the Halls on Post Monday Night Madness series here, here's how it stands. The 42 of Kevin Brents. Uh, he's out in front, 88 points to the good side. And then up three positions uh, is Tony Bowling. And su- he's sitting in second place. In the overall points, seven points behind Kevin Brent and the uh, 96 machine, Jason Riddle, up three positions as well. He's sitting uh, 11 points behind the lead. 77 of Jason Krause in fourth position, up two positions this week, guys. 73 points, 15 behind uh, the leader as uh, Kyle Lent, uh, I understand, has taken the lead. From uh, Jesse Racimus. In fact, Jesse Racimus, uh, back out on the track, guys, is giving it up to uh, James Brigate and Kyle Lent both. Larry Malkin uh, seeing all that action happening out there in front. 14 laps in the books here at Chicago so far, but I'll tell you what, uh, Kyle Lent, a new leader out here. Back to the points, a uh, Jerry Hinkle, or actually James Brigate, let's talk about him here for a minute. Or actually, we left off in fourth place. Kyle Lent, uh, new leader out here at Chicago Land Speedway, down one position this week. He's in the fifth place uh, standings, and uh, he's 15 points behind the lead. Him and Jason Krause both share a uh, 15-point deficit uh, this week. James Griegate down five positions, guys, incredibly. Uh, he's in sixth position, 22 points behind the lead. A lot of racing left still. I think there's uh, 10 more weeks of racing here in the series. In 7th, Jerry Hinkle, a 33 car, 28 points behind the lead. In 8th, up, uh, and Jerry Hinkle's up uh, 9 position, guys. Up 7 in 8th place is going to be the 47 of Roger Haygood, 29 points behind the lead. Larry Mulliken, the biggest mover all week, up 14 position, guys. The 27, Larry Mulliken, 30 points behind the lead, and he shares that with the 49 of Frank Jockman, who is up nine positions. And that's your top ten for the Halls on Post Monday Night Madness Series. Out here at the Speedway, Chicago on Speedway, Kyle Lentz got the lead, James Griegate right behind him. We've seen this duo out here uh, like this before. In fact, they, I think they duped it out at uh, Kentucky Speedway last Friday, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, our first car with four tires at Kevin Brent. He's slowly working his way forward as he's side by side right now with the 55 of Dwayne Hall, kind of picking him up one by one. He's got a little traffic in front of him. Got the 22 and the 27 uh, fighting for the fifth position there. So look at Kevin Brent start moving forward with some fresh tires, JD. Yeah, I'm a little knock on Tracy's head. Remember what happened the last time Paul went to the outside early in the day, Friday night? Uh, Yeah, you bet. And, uh, copy that uh, on Friday night, so uh, we'll keep an eye on that kind of action. But uh, Jason Riddle getting up there, mixing it up with the 55 machine, too, looking for a place to go. As, uh, the 42 machine's got, uh, looks like a Frankie Samato out in front of him, almost thinking about a three-wide thing here. Ain't going to make it here too wide. 22 with Frankie Samanto on the bottom, 55 Dwayne Hall, and uh, the 42 uh, Kevin Brent's uh, side by side action here coming down the front stretch. Kind of got a bottleneck going on there, JD, with uh, Larry Mulliken and the 22 car because now the 96 and also the former Dan White has joined this group. Got uh, Dwayne Hall and Dan White both running that high line with Frankie Samanto, the 42 of Kevin Brent, and all of a sudden he just slows way down. Let's all these go by, guys, go by, J.D. Maybe just thinking, uh, save my car and uh, hang back and try this again. Yeah, it almost looked like uh, it almost looks like somebody got off the throttle a little bit early up there in front of Brent's. Brent's taking some evasive action to avoid uh, a, con- a conflict there as uh, the 47 car gets into the wall here a little bit. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, they're duking it out up here and just uh, looking for a place to race. Tell you just had the three of Hal Beard was go around the outside of uh, the 96 of uh, 
Jason Riddle there. Jason Riddle gets back in. Oh, they got oh. contact a little bit. Uh, tell you what, great job by Halberd was holding on to that car. Uh, that car got a little sideways, and they kept that thing going straight, J.D. Yeah, that's uh, some pretty good handling there uh, by the three of Hal Beardsworth, keeping that car uh, steady as she goes and point forward, getting a little bit, uh, a little bit out of sync there, uh, coming down the front stretch. But uh, he's got a good handle on it now. But uh, a little bit of racing going on out here. Twenty-two laps in the books here. Hundred laps race at uh, Chicago Land Speedway, guys. Is I think they're starting to heat up here on the track, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, Kevin Prince, he kind of backed off. He's on his way back forward again. He just got around that 96. So Jason Riddle moving up the position. But I tell you what, Dan White and uh, Larry Mulligan still up there on the outside of uh, Dwayne Hall, uh, holding Dwayne off, not letting him get by him. And Dwayne gets back behind that number four of uh, Dan White. Dan White's been moving forward here, J.D. Yeah, and Hal Beersworth uh, right behind those three. Hal Beersworth uh, looking to move that number three good wrench machine up to the front, too. But i uh, tell you what, I don't see any banana peels at Chicagoland yet. No, it seems to be him running pretty good. We've gotten past uh, a lot of the lap time. Our uh, cars are getting loose up there. I tell you, it looks like uh, Jesse Rusemus, his car is working pretty good. He's back up there with uh, Fallen Kyle and Jim Gregate right on their back bumper. So maybe his car is going to run pretty good on the long run here, J.D. He's going to be able to stick with them guys and run a little lower line than uh, James Regate. Uh, we almost slid up into him, but uh, checked up and let him stay ahead of him, J.D. Yeah, you bet. And I want to remind everybody, hey, you want to watch this race again? Watch it three or four times. Get over to uh, the new and improved ET ETV ePlay store. I'll tell you what, ETV-ePlay.net. And uh, Sean Bickle, John Wesley, done a pretty fantastic job redesigning the entire site. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you can go over there and, uh, and watch the replays of these races. Fantastic uh, racing here at the nation. ETV-ePlay.net, dude. Get over there and uh, get a handle on it. And uh, I'll tell you, the action out here is just, ooh, the 42 car all the way down on the apron. I think he's, oh, he's, he's something's wrong with the 42, Tracy. He's backing way up. And uh, I got a funny feeling he might have some uh, some severe, severe tire issues going on here. He just let about six cars go by him. Yeah, I'm not too sure uh, what he's trying to do. Uh, maybe he's been uh, noticing a loose condition with his car, and uh, being in that much traffic is probably causing uh, issues with his car. So it's, he's thinking maybe right now it's better off to get out of them group, big groups of cars like that, back up, and hopefully they'll break up to individual cars so it doesn't... Uh, cause whatever condition uh, the 42 is fighting with right now, J.D. Yeah, yeah, you could be right, almost going through your white here, but I'll tell you what, this gaggle up here, the 27, and the, uh, the 22 car, the 77 machine, and uh, the 21 machine, the 65 car, Sean Brown now entering into the picture here. This is uh, this is where the race is at right here, guys. Too wide. It's been too wide now for about three or four laps. With uh, looks like the 22 car of uh, Frankie Samato out in front. The 27, Larry Malkin. He's been up on that high side now for about eight or nine laps. The 77 machine coming. Uh, it's three wide, guys. This is this is unbelievable racing right right here. And about uh, 13th place back here is Tony Bowling takes it three wide. Yeah, I tell you what, J.D., I was watching that, and uh, Larry Mulligan got kind of trapped on that high side and ended up being pushing up there. But I was also watching up here in front, the number four of Dan White, he's got around, uh, what we like to call him, the student of his, uh, took it over that fourth place spot. It looked like he's going to get around Kyle Lynn and take the third spot all at the same time as James Regan in that seven takes the lead with Jets to receive it in second. Dan White is in fourth, followed by Kyle Lynn and Hal Beard, which are top five. Yeah, you bet. And uh, Dan White uh, pretty much coming from behind, guys, uh, all the way up forward. Dan White, returning champion. And uh, I talked about him, uh, you know, uh, the first race. We had an interview with him, had him up in the booth. As a Dan White uh, moving into second position around Jesse Racemus. Dan White took uh, took the season off as uh, Racemus, the 16 of Kyle Lent, and Hal Beardsworth moving up three wide coming off of turn four. Yeah, I tell you what. Great job by Hal Beard was not to get up in the wall. They didn't leave him a lot of room, and he prevailed, passes both the 16 and the 70 to get up there in third spot as the 55 of Dwayne Hall now getting around that 16 to take over the fifth position, J.D. 
Yeah, you bet. 31 laps in the books here at Chicagoland Speedway. Our last uh, pit stop for about half of these guys came on lap two. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, this is about the time when we start seeing the effects of tire wear. We're about, uh, oh, let's call it uh, 20 laps or so, 30, actually 30, about 30 laps into this, this uh, tire run for some of these guys, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you, we got a few guys who stopped on lap 42, and the other guys haven't stopped at all. So you're looking at that front group having, yeah, 30 laps in their tires, take a couple laps for uh, caution. But tell you what a great job. As it looks like the three of Hal Beard was had just taken the lead, followed by that four of uh, Dan White and the seven of James Regate falling back. The fourth position now is the 55 of Dwayne Hall. And then fifth position is the number 70 of Jesse Racimas. I'll tell you what, uh, the number three car of Hal Beardworth, he's just absolutely leaving that crowd. Dan White uh, can't even stay to hang with him. Maybe his banana peel problem from uh, Friday night's race is all over. Looks like the setup's running great for him tonight as he takes that lead. And uh tell you what, he, like you said, he's running away from Dan White at the moment. Got a, about a car and a half length lead over him. We'll see how this keeps going on here, J.D., as we're getting into the later laps. Yeah, you bet. Uh, I'm surprised... Uh I'm surprised, uh, you know, this uh, this many laps in, 34 laps in the books here, uh, over 30 laps on that set of tires, and he's just absolutely got that number three machine flying around this track, guys. And uh, Dan White, uh, he can't even hang with him up here. That's that's unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a great job. Because uh, I'll tell you what, Dan's looking low. Hal Beard is running about a car and a half up from the bottom there. And all the rest of these guys are doing everything they can to get up to that number three car. And Dan White, tell you what, if he's going to find a way around, he usually can. But tell you what, that uh, number three of Hal Beardman, they've got that car uh, tuned up sweet tonight. You bet. And uh, that gaggle of cars that we were uh, paying attention to, Larry Malkin, uh, uh, Tony Bowling, uh, they've all pretty much split up. Tony Bowling moved up into eighth position. Larry Malkin going backwards here, though, guys. 27 machine currently in 16th place. As, uh, they're pretty much single file. I think they're probably starting to see the effects of a little bit of tire wear here, guys, over 30 laps on, on some of these sets of tires. Now, there are uh, some of these guys got uh, two, uh, let's call it five laps more on their tires because, remember, on that last pit stop or that last caution on lap two, uh, but the uh, first 10 cars, Tracy, did not come in and pit. Yeah, but they were still running them qualifying tires that already had uh, pretty significant wear. When you try to qualify, you push some tires as hard as you can. That is probably the effect of them slowing down compared to everybody else who got in there, got those fresh sets of tires. So everybody with fresh set tires only got 35 laps on those. Uh, everybody who stayed out had at least five laps on their tires, like you said, J.D., And just checking over the wall here, it looks like uh, Jay Bunn has called it a night. Uh, he called it a night pretty early on lap five here, guys. And uh, put that uh, number 37 machine up on the hauler. And we say here on ETV Live, headed for the barn. I'll tell you what, uh, Dan White uh, working on uh, working on his lap times up here. He's finally caught up to that number three, Hal Beardsworth. But uh, I'll tell you what, they are just absolutely walking away from James Greegate. He's uh, about to almost two seconds behind, guys. And I'll tell you what, this came on about lap 34 or so. Uh, Hal Beardsworth and Dan White just absolutely walking away from the field, guys. I'll tell you what, you can tell that James Greegate, he's got the old tires on. And uh, Dwayne Hall is trying to do everything he can to get by the seven of James Greegate. Just can't get a run off the corner to get underneath them there, J.D. You bet. And the 55 machine coming up alongside the number seven teammates here. Hall's on post. Teammates, uh, James Grigate, the 55 of Dwayne Hall. Dwayne Hall moving up into third position here. James Grigate backing it off here a little bit. 40 laps in the books here at Chicagoland Speedway, guys. Now, what word has it that uh, a few uh, a few seasons ago, there was a driver out here, I think it was Tim Milhorn, was able to get something in the neighborhood of about 63 or 64 laps on uh, on a tire run? Yeah, a fuel run, as a matter of fact, J.D., was a fuel. Uh, the fuel only shows that you can run like 58 laps. 
for 60 on fuel, and he ran like 63 laps on fuel and got the win, J.D. You bet. Then uh, Sean Brown uh, moving past the number seven machine. Oh, seven, seven going back real fast, guys. I think uh, he's probably just getting off the throttle trying to hang on to those tires or what's left of them. As uh, looks like the uh, 42 of Kevin Brent's getting up alongside the 21, coming into turn three and four here. Comes down the front stretch. 21 up on the outside. You can make that outside run pretty good. But uh, tell you what, getting down into turn one, you got to back it out pretty considerably because you, uh, you can't beat the guy on the bottom around the turn. But it uh, looks like uh, the 55 of uh, Dwayne Hall now going backwards here a little bit. Sean Brown taking over that position, moving up into third. So we got a little bit of racing going on up here in front, boys. I tell you what, there was no problem with that 42. Like I said, he was just getting out of that mess of cars, waiting for him to clean out. And he's all the way back up to fourth position now, J.D. Uh, got him the people in front of the way he wanted it, where they weren't all bunched together. Basically having you to... Uh, Jump on the brakes. So we got already a guy heading down pit road. The 70 of Jesse Racimus in pit road, J.D. Jesse, the wall banger Racimus, your pole sitter for tonight, and uh, led about the first 10 laps, but uh, suddenly going backwards, uh, first one to hit pit road. Green flag pit stops underway. Yeah, and he's got already back out on the track, J.D. Got his four fresh tires and uh, fuel, and he was still running them qualifying tires, J.D., so he's actually got... Uh, 47 laps in them tires. Yeah, you bet. 44 laps in the book, plus three laps of qualifying uh, still on those tires. And, uh, of course, remind everybody here in the ARCA series, you start to race on your qualifying tires. So, hey, you want to burn them up during qualifying and save a little bit for the race? Or how does that work? <laughs> That's pretty much it, J.D. I like that, that early caution. You only had half the fields up, but we're slowly, one by one, getting cars. As Kyle Lent, the 16, is down pit road. The 17, of Tom Pazinski, he's already been in pit road. Now the 96, of Jason Riddle's in there. 27, of Larry Mulliken. So look for everybody to start hitting pit road now, GD. They all can make it on fuel, so uh, they're going to probably run it from here unless there's, no, if there's any cautions. You bet green flag pit stops taking place uh, as we speak here. And uh, Hal Beardsworth is uh, still out there in front, guys. I tell you what, him and Dan White have just absolutely left the field. Kevin Brent's uh, your third place car is over three seconds behind, as uh, James Greengate uh, signaling for his pit. Yeah, we got the 47 Roger Haygood. He's heading down pit road. Uh, Kyle Lent, Jason Reynolds, both heading back out on the track. Look for that 27 Larry Mulligan. He should be leaving the pit just in a minute, JD. And the three and two, four is still out on the track, JD. Heading down one more time around. One more time around. Hey, what, 47 laps in the books here at Chicago Land Speedway. Green flag pit stops coming our way. We haven't seen this uh, for quite some time. Kind of fun to watch here. And uh, I'll tell you, some strategies playing out. We know that, uh, of course, we know up here in the booth, uh, you know, that these cars can do about 62, 63 laps. But uh, we haven't seen any of that uh, happening yet. As, uh, looks like Dwayne Hall in the 55 machine making his green flag pit stops. Oh, looks like he's going to just barely get across Whoa. the cone there. Almost missed. Uh, that would have been a big-time penalty, at least a one-lap penalty there, had he uh, hit that commit line, uh, or commit cone. Yeah, and then I tell you, we got 77 with Jason Krausman. They're talking about trying to get absolutely everything out of a car you can get. Uh, I'll tell you what, that was so close to being over that orange cone. Just makes it inside of the three and four are staying on the track still, J.D., and I don't know how that's going to work. You've got all these cars who have stopped or actually making time on you. So by the time you get in the pits, and if a caution comes out early, you might not be leading the race when that caution comes back out. Yeah, you bet uh, 32.7 uh, is the time for Beardsworth. And... Uh, Dan White uh, staying right there with him with a 32.697. So they're, they're about they're about the same here. But uh, go back here just a little bit. Uh, Jesse Racimus turning 32 threes. Uh, Jesse uh, Racimus has already been in uh, and had his pit stop. Uh, James Greegate back out on track 32 fours to uh, Hal Beardsworth 32.7. So uh, little by little they keep clicking off here. So you got to wonder, uh, Tracy. 
I think you're right. Uh, you know, how Beardsworth and Dan White up here, they've got about two seconds on the field, but how long is that going to last before these other guys uh, start creeping way up on them? Yeah, they're almost uh, faster by almost a second around the track right now, J.D., as a 34, Joe DePino hit Bits Road. And if they're out there, think about it, they're uh, almost a second faster, but they uh, are out there 10 extra laps. That's making 10 seconds, plus almost 8 seconds up on them guys by the time they pit, J.D. Yeah, you bet. I'll tell you what, with uh, green flag pit stops underway, we got uh, about, looks like about uh, half the field yet uh, still needs to come in. Why don't we go ahead and step away, uh, and we'll take a commercial break. Well, let's stay with it here for uh, just a couple of laps here. Dan White going after Hal Beardsworth for the lead. He gets it. Looks like Hal Beardsworth just uh, kind of pulled down and let him go by. Uh, Hal Beardsworth might be setting himself up for a pit stop here, Tracy. Yeah, get up in front of him. Uh, set your own lap time. Get at least a lap lead. Uh, see if they stay out a little longer. I mean, we're on lap 52. We know they're going to make it on fuel. Not too sure why these guys are staying out this long with all these guys pitting, J.D. You bet there's uh, no indication from the three-car uh, of pitting, uh, nor from the four-car. So uh, why don't we go ahead and step away. We'll take a commercial break here. You will not miss a thing. we got some picture-in-picture -picture action going here from Chicagoland Speedway. So uh, keep your eyes on the uh, little right-hand screen down there uh, in the... In the uh, on the screen there. So, uh, Chicagoland, I almost said the Monster Mile in Dover, but uh, I guess we're not there. Chicagoland Motor Speedway, and we got it live, ETV Live, the only choice. Sit tight, we'll be right back. Back live with you. Of course, you didn't miss a thing. ETV live at Chicago Land Speedway, and uh, kind of a unique little uh, deal that we got here at ETV. We can bring you the race live, so you don't miss anything out here. Dan White and Hal Beard were still going around this thing, guys. But they've got Kevin Brent, Sean Brown, Tony Bowling, Frankie Samato, Brian Pace, Dave Hooten have not pitted yet. And uh, I tell you what, uh, they are just squeezing every ounce of gas that they can possibly get out of these machines. How, uh, Dan White and Hal Birdsworth have about a 1.8 second lead over the uh, over the rest of the field here, guys. But I tell you what, uh, the rest of them are going to start catching up here any minute. Uh, and I tell you what, uh, seems like it'd be a big risk out here, uh, Tracy. Uh, of course, we've been talking about it here just a little bit. The three and a four car out here. Uh, putting all these extra laps on, I think I probably would have pitted along with everybody else and not risked. Yeah, JD, we got a few guys heading back now. Now the 21 Tony Bowl and the 22 uh, Frankie Samano hitting pit road. Yeah, like I said, I don't understand this. They're almost losing. Those guys who stop are gaining seven tenths of a second per lap, and the longer they stay out, if this thing doesn't have a yellow come out at any time when they go to pit. There's a very good chance those cars could end up, I mean, several seconds behind the other group who stopped early. I mean, they're going to have faster tires and to work their way forward, but they might run out of time to catch back up to them, J.D. Yeah, you bet. Uh, 58 laps in the books here at Chicagoland Speedway, a 100-lap race here tonight. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm pretty impressed so far. We've only had the one caution came on lap two, the 33 of Gary Hinkle bringing that one out, a little contact with the apron. Spun, uh, right, spun that 33 right, ETV down. machine around a little bit. Uh, no harm, no Just foul. Just uh, four tires, uh, Tracy. Go ahead. Yeah, it looks like the 70 of Jesse Receimus just last to coming off the board, J.D. He's sitting sideways here on the tri-oval. Everybody's getting around him, but tell you what, uh, 70 of Jesse Receimus just lost it. Coming off the of four, and I uh, got up in that wall. Yeah, quite a bit of... Uh, quite a bit bit of damage to uh, Jesse the wall banger Racimus in that uh, 70, 70 machine 
As uh, okay, caution field. lights come on, second caution of the First night here, guys, on lap 60, Chicago Land Speedway. Tell you what, that's exactly what those lead group cars wanted. They've got all them guys trapped a lap down now, J.D. There is only six cars on the lead lap. Make it seven, because James Greegate, he's going to get the lucky dog. So six guys left on the lead lap now. Yeah, with uh, 40 laps left uh, at uh, Chicagoland here, and I'll tell you what, uh, that's, that's going to be disappointing news from about Kyle Lent on. And you're right, uh, James Greegate, the first car, one lap down, he will be the recipient of the lucky dog. So that'll put, what, uh, seven cars on the lead lap, guys, when we restart here in about three laps? Yeah, I tell you what, that's a lot of cars a lap down. I don't think we're going to have that many cautions uh, okay, to get everybody back cars. around within 40 laps. So uh, just going to be a tough night for a lot of really good cars out there tonight, J.D. Well, and that, uh, you know, that only sets up about uh, six cars, seven, you know, five, six cars for uh, Dan White and Hal Beardsworth to have to contend with here. But I'll tell you what, uh, they didn't come alive until about lap 34 or so. So uh, I'll tell you what, were they sitting back hanging on to what they had? Or, I mean, was the strategy working out in their favor? Or, uh, you know, what was their plan? I mean, uh, the three-car and the four-car seem to be working together tonight. Yeah, but they're going to have a lot of people behind them. I mean, you're only looking at seven cars leading lap. That means your eighth-place car is going to be a lap down, and he's going to do everything he can to get past those uh seven leaders in front of them, so, I mean, that in some ways, that's going to put them in a little bit of peril there, too, J.D. You bet, and uh, it looks like Dan White wins the race off of Pitt Road, but uh, a little bit of sideswiping action going on there with a couple of them, but I'll tell you what, uh, 61 laps in the books, 70 machine bringing the this caution out here on lap 60, uh, and uh, heavy damage on the uh, pole sitter tonight, so... Uh, Tell you what, why don't we step away? We'll take another commercial break right here. You're watching live ETV live from Chicagoland Speedway in Joliet, Illinois. Sit tight, we'll be right back. Oh, there, cowboy. Ain't no need to get the hammers out and tear it all up. What you need to do is get a hold of David Bass, DB Tech Services. Technology support offered at a price affordable to most churches, not for profits and individual customers. I'll tell you what, David Bass, IT specialist, over five years at the corporate level. Hey, man, computer maintenance, hardware and software upgrades. I'll tell you what, David Bass, DB Tech Services, established specifically to provide lower cost options to churches and non profit organization. So put the hammer away, dude. Get all the David Bass. DB Tech Services. DBTechService.com. All right, and we are back live here at Chicago on Speedway, Joliet, Illinois. Quick trip in the ETV Superjet from uh, Dover, Delaware. We had some issues there earlier. And uh, race ad race uh, officials over there called that race and uh, decided that uh, we needed to be over here at Chicagoland. So uh, we apologize for the confusion to our audience out there. And uh, plus, uh, ETV is having their own technical issue. I tell you what, uh, you know, it's just not our night tonight, Tracy. <laughs> no, she started off pretty tough and pretty rough tonight, and it seems to be continuing there. But tell you what, we've been having a really good race. We've got a long green flag run there for, look like, 60 laps. So the race has been going good, except for we had the issues with the, the, the Dover track. But uh, now we're here in Chicago. We seem to be having a really good race tonight. Only have two cautions. They're getting ready to go green again, J.D. You bet. And looks like we've got a couple of cars uh don't know who that is down there on the apron down there. I'm assuming green, green, that's green, uh, green. Justin or Seaman is probably going to let everybody go. But Dan White's going to pick up the green flag here tonight with Kevin Brandt, Sean Brown, Hal Beardsworth, and Brian Pace, your top five here at Chicago on, on this restart. And uh, James Greegate uh, got his lap back and uh, is on the lead lap starting in fifth. And uh, I'll tell you what, there's only about uh, five or six cars on the lead lap. So it, I'll tell you, a lot of these guys are going to be... Uh, Hustling, hustling around. If it's not the lucky dog, they got to try to race it back and get around Dan White, Tracy. 
Yeah, I tell you, I said, they're going to be racing for everything they got to get back around those guys up there to get their lead lab back. So that's just going to be uh, more opportunity for cautions, J.D. The harder and harder they push these cars, the more chance of somebody getting loose or possibly getting in the back of somebody. Yeah, you bet. And uh, I'll tell you what, out here in front, Dan White and uh, Kevin Brent, your leaders out here, Hal Beardsworth, uh, him and Dan White just absolutely walked away from the field uh, in that first uh, segment. But, uh, you know, it took them about 32 laps to get up there. So uh, my take is they've got a long run set up under their, uh, under their uh, belt here. And uh, that's probably what they're looking for tonight. Right, is, uh, the 21 car gets into the seven. Third caution coming out tonight, guys. Oh, wow, a lot of them involved. The 21, the 15 car, I'm hearing. Yeah, J.D., uh, 21 guy going there, had some really good speed, and it's uh, 7 looked like he had to slow down a little check up for the 65. Uh, the 21 got in the back of the 7, then comes down the track, gets into the 96, gets turned to the outside wall, collects that number 16 car of Kyle Lentz. Uh, all them cars are going to be damaged now, and uh, about to see who our new lucky dog recipient is there, J.D., Yeah, it looks like uh, Jason Riddle might be the uh, lucky dog here, but you're right, the 65 car checks up for something. Wow, look at the front end of that 7 machine all the way underneath the uh, the 65 machine. It's wondering he didn't pick him right up off the ground. 21 looking for a place to go down there. The 96 machine behind seeing all that happening. So is the 16, probably getting on the brakes just a little bit as the 7 goes into a slide. And uh, 21 machine, nowhere to go. And uh, clips the uh, the front of that seven. Of course, that sends him down the track a little bit. But uh, tough night here for the uh, 96, the seven machine, the 16, the 55 uh, machine. Of Dwayne uh, Hall just manages to uh, get by all that, Tracy. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, when you get that many guys a lap down uh, fairly early in the race, like that, 40 laps to go, that just gives those guys who are just a lap down now are going to be fighting for everything they can to be that first car a lap lap down or try to get to them leaders and just get by them and uh, race your way back on the lead lap and hope for a caution to happen behind you somewhere, uh, hoping that you're not going to be the one involved in the the caution, but it looks like uh, a lot of our leaders, and one of our uh, top five cars of the seven of James Riga got caught up in that crash, J.D. Yeah, you bet. Uh, you know, uh, Chicago Line Speedway, uh, this is a track where drafting means a lot here. And I'll tell you, you get any uh, front-end damage uh, on your machine here uh, is uh, can be kind of devastating if uh, if it's uh, you know gets too bad. But uh, James Greegate involved in all that. Of course, James Greegate uh, going lap down on that last caution. Uh, actually, a couple cautions uh, or, uh, on a green flag pit stop, mind you. And then, uh, of course, having that caution come out goes a lap down, picks up the lucky dog. Lucky enough to get back on the lead lap, and then uh, you know within a couple laps have uh, have damage, uh, you know get caught up, and get uh, damaged, uh, done to your car. So uh, tough night for that number seven machine, guys. Yeah, and I tell you what, I just watched pit road there, and uh, the number four of Dan White decided to go in and uh, get some adjustments and uh, get some fresh tires, JD, for this last run. Most of the leaders stayed out except for the seven of James Greig eight and the fifteen also with the men. You bet. Caution number three coming out here at Chicagoland Speedway. And uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we go ahead and step away. We'll take a real com- quick commercial break here. You won't miss a thing out here on the track. We've got a little picture-in-picture picture action going for you. And you'll only find that right here live on ETV Live. So sit tight. Don't go away. Oh, there, cowboy. Ain't no need to get the hammers out and tear it all up. What you need to do is get a hold of David Bass, DB Tech Services. Technology support offered at a price affordable to most churches, not-for-profits, and individual customers. I'll tell you what, David Bass, IT specialist, over five years at the corporate level. Hey, man, computer maintenance, hardware and software upgrades. I'll tell you what, David Bass, DB Tech Services, established specifically to provide lower-cost options to churches and non-profits organization. So put the hammer away, dude. Get a hold of David Bass. DB Tech Services. DBTechService.com Alright. Uh, I think we're back live. 
have a little bit of technical difficulties here with our communications and our, our producer. But uh, although he's sitting right behind us, uh, you know, face the other way, looking at his bank of monitors and, of course, uh, pushing the buttons with his magic fingers on those remote cameras. But uh, we have to talk through these communications devices, and apparently John's is not working back here. But I'll tell you what, that doesn't keep him from uh, using those magic fingers, as always, here on ETV Live. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, working caution number three, still far below our average of seven here at Chicagoland. Of course, the night's not over yet, Tracy, as uh, we keep things rolling here. 68 laps in the books and uh, about 30 laps or so to go. The uh, seven machine uh, bringing out that last caution on lap 65, the 60. Uh, Five machine uh, kind of helped things along there a little bit, but the 16 was involved. 16 car Kyle Lent up on the hauler behind the wall, and as we always say here on ETV Live, heading for the barn. Heading for the barn. But uh, I tell you that uh, probably uh, that probably upset that kid uh, quite a bit. Kyle Lent uh, looking to uh, do something in this series. Uh, I think this is the first full time series that he's able to run. Uh, in a pro series, or the at least the Monday night series, Kyle Lent uh, slipped down a position in the points, but uh, still in the top five in the standings. So uh, Kyle Lent out of the race here at Chicago uh, because of that last caution. But uh, picking up the uh, green flag this time around, the 42 car of Kevin Brent's guys. Now the 42 car. You know, that first run, Tracy, uh, we were a little bit uh, skeptical about him. He kept, uh, he'd kept sneak up there and then back off, back way off, but, you know, let about three or four cars by him. And then, uh, but slowly but surely, he creeped back up in there, and he's going to pick up the green flag on his restart. So it's, it's going to be Kevin Brantz, Hal Beardworth, Sean Brown, Dave Hooten still hanging out in the top five, and Dan White uh, up here. So uh, ready to take the green flag one more time here. i tell you what, like I said, that number four of, uh, got a few cars at the top, got fresh tires out there, J.D., so it should be quite interesting on this longer run how well that top four cars are going to do with somebody right behind it with fresh fresh tires out there, J.D. Well, you know what, I'm curious about the uh, three car of uh, Hal Beardsworth and that four car machine of Dan White. Uh, you know, they didn't seem to come alive until about 30 laps into that last run. As uh, the Hal Beardsworth machine, uh, the number three Goodwrench machine, goes right to the lead around the 42 of Kevin Brent. But uh, I'm still rather skeptical because, uh, like I said, they didn't come alive until about 30 laps into that last run, Tracy. And there's only uh, 29 laps left in this race. So I'm wondering if they've got a uh, short run set up underneath that machine now. Yeah, I'm not too sure, J.D., because I know the three, he got back around the 42. Now the 55 is Sean Brown. He just got around the 42. I know Kevin Brents tend to build his setup more for the long run. Uh, pays for it on the short run as the number eight of uh, Dave Hooten. He's got underneath the 42. Uh, getting by him and boy, try to get right on the back bumper of that 65 car of uh, Sean Brown as the four is under the 42 now. Yeah, and the four uh, looks like the chrome horn come out on that uh, 42 machine by the four car. Dan White there. I saw the 42 get a little... Oh, excuse me, get a little bit sideways there after uh, taking a little bit of a tap off that number four machine. Yeah, and you got the 96 of Jason Riddle coming underneath the 42. I'll tell you what, man, Dan White didn't have a lot of room in that side slide job. He just pulled on the 42 right across his nose. But I tell you, the 7 of James Gregate, he's moved up into this group and has now made it a two deep car side by side again, J.D. You got uh, two cars wide back here, the 55 car and uh, his teammate. James Gregate up on the outside out here. James Gregate, uh, was, you know, like you said, was able to hang on to the lead lap, but uh, Dwayne Hall is actually the uh, the first lap down car here, guys. And uh, I'll tell you what, to Hal Birdsworth out in front, Sean Brown, Dave Hooten in third, then it's Dan White, Kevin Brent, Jason Riddle, Gregate, and Pace. Those are the only cars on the lead lap, Tracy, with about 25 laps to go here. Tell you what, it's going to be a good night for uh, Brian Pace. He usually doesn't run way up for it. The 96 of Jason Real just got into the 7 of that 7 car coming through 4 there, but no damage to the car. They kept on going. But tell you what, for Brian Pace, it's going to be one of his uh, 
a really good finish for him, being able to stay out there those guys on that long run and getting everybody lapped down behind him, J.D. Yeah, you bet. And uh, I'll tell you what, looking, in, looking back up front here, that uh, three machine of Hal Beardsworth, now he's stepping away from the 65 of Sean Brown. I know him and uh, Sean Brown, uh, you know, uh, I know if they hang out at the same bar once in a while, but uh, Sean Brown looking to uh, move it up uh, forward there and uh, hook up with that three machine. But uh, Dan White back here still kind of fumbling around with the eight machine. Dave Hooten up on the outside. Dan White uh, now pulling up on that 65 machine and uh, going to put the pressure on old Sean. Yeah, I tell you what, this is usually when time Sean uh, comes up and starts shining there towards the end of the race as they're getting there. I tell you, the 42 car is really kind of starting to move backwards. He's back here in six and seven that James Grigge got around him. Uh, see if maybe this just like I said, just because he's maybe got a long run set up here and his car is just not quite handling right here as he moves up the track and it looks like that 96 of uh, Jason Riddle just going to get a nose just underneath the 42 but I tell you what he's holding them off and uh, 42 is now getting underneath the 8 of Doug Ho Dave Hood. I'll tell you Wendy Bernard uh, you know we haven't had uh, too much out of you tonight at all but uh, you got to be pretty proud that number 8 machine Dave Hood driving for Dragon Motorsports pretty much staying in the top 5 all night long Wendy yeah, it's been something that we've been working on, and uh, I'm pleased to see that he's actually taking it to heart and, and, and doing what I ask. You bet. And uh, getting reports of the number four car uh, letting off a little bit of steam out here, so I'm wondering if uh, a little tape was added uh, to that number four Valvoline machine, Tracy, or uh, what's going on? Yeah, that's my guess. He uh, probably had a little more tape on that. I uh, thought he was okay to maybe, maybe add a percent to it, but uh looks like on this big, long straightaway heading down the, the front stretch just before he entered the corner. Oh, I guess it's not him smoking. It's a number three. Just the let three off car. a lot of smoke there, J.D. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, if the uh, race officials get wind of that, uh, they're going to uh, force that number three car to come in and pit. So uh, I'll tell you what, uh, if those race officials are uh, looking the other way, Doing all those things, puff, puff, park. I bet that's a pretty big risk. Uh, that number three machine out there smoking, going out. And, oh yeah, he's uh, really steaming down the front stretch. So uh, I would imagine that they're going to call that uh, number uh, three machine, uh, Hal Beardsworth, in, and they're going to make him untape that uh, that machine. As, oh, side by side action here with uh, the eight of uh, Doug, Dave Hooten and the 65 of Sean Brown. But uh, Dan White uh, creeping up. I think Beardsworth backing out of the throttle here a little bit, but just try, trying to stay in front of that seven machine. But to help Beardsworth may be in trouble here. The officials have not called him in yet, and uh, believe uh, a couple of laps around, and uh, you need to park that thing and come in and untape it. But uh, so far, uh, the three machine's still staying out there on the track, so any minute he may get black flagged. Yeah, I tell you what, he's doing everything he can to keep that car from smoking, but I tell you what, it's going to be hard to hold off cars that can go full throttle, full way down the stretch when you're starting to have to lift two-thirds of the way down there, J.D. He's going to have a real tough time staying up there and uh, having the officials not uh, wave him in as he's starting to smoke real good about a, about a quarter of the way down that front straightaway. Now, the seven and the four get hooked together, uh, get pushed way up the wall, J.D. Uh, great job of saving it, though. You bet, and uh, I just I just had a uh, small note passed to me by one of the race officials. It looks like they're looking at that three machine, and uh, but still I haven't seen a uh, still haven't seen the black flag come out for that number three machine. And this is about the third or fourth time around, and I believe if the rules state uh, they only give you a couple of laps and uh, and that's it. But uh, the three machine still hanging out out there, number four machine uh, looking to take over the lead uh, if they uh, black flag that uh, good wrench machine. Yeah, he smoked half halfway down the front straightaway that time, JD. I gotta think the officials are gonna call him, and everybody knows on the track knows the rules about smoking. And uh, tell you what, that's quite a bit of smoking for him to keep going around the track. But probably just pull his scorecard. Yeah, you bet. And uh, moving back here just a little bit further, it looks like the uh, 42 of Kevin Brent and the 65 of Sean Brown side by side here. Of course, up in front of them, James Greegate, and uh, and there's the penalty. Penalty being uh, sent to the number three, Hal Beardsworth. Beardsworth and that number three good wrench machine has to back it down and take the penalty. Oh, guys. unbelievable! Oh, 
the three halberd just got hit by that 42 of, uh, I believe it was uh, Brent's, right in the rear quarter panel, J.D. JD. Lucky he kept going on. But, yeah, just like you said, he's smoking too much. you got a drive-through penalty, J.D. You bet. Uh, that's going to be pretty upsetting for that three machine. And uh, I'll tell you what, that sets a whole whole new deal up here in front is James Greegate. I'll tell you what, if luck hasn't come his way tonight, I don't know what has. James Greegate back to the lead up here. I'll tell you, coming back from a uh, uh, green flag pit stop, set him back a, a, a one lap. And then the uh, caution flag comes out, lucky enough to be the uh, first car on that uh, on that uh, 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 lap down. Gets his uh, gets his lap back, restarts at the back of the field. Of course, back of the field, we're talking seven cars in back of the leader, Tracy, on that restart after lap 65. So I tell you what, uh, I, that car is just absolutely full of good luck charms tonight. <laughs> yeah, actually, we're down to we're still up to. Seven cars in the lead lap still, J.D. Tell you what, James Regan doing a great job getting up there in the lead with all that was going on there. And I tell you what, now the four of Dan White, he's going to be right there following them. And they both have about the same amount of tires on them, but the only difference is, is the damage that James Regan received on that, his rear quarter panel on that caution earlier. Yeah, you bet. And uh, remember, it was uh, it was Hal Beersworth and Dan White that just basically walked away from the field in that first run after about uh, 32 laps uh, on their tires. And uh, you know, uh, I don't think uh, I don't think those two guys pitted on that first stop on lap two, so they were still on their qualifying tires. So they got over something something in the neighborhood of about 57, 58 laps uh, on those tires. Uh, on that first run uh, when the caution came out on, on lap 60, I believe it was. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Dan White put the pressure on James Grigate up here. Dan White, former champion here from the series uh, here at the Nation, and took season three off as a uh, coach and spotter for the number eight machine, Dave Hooten. I'll tell you what, is absolutely showing Dave Hooten uh, still inside the top ten here at Chicagoland, Tracy. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they're doing a great job. I'll tell you, Hal Beard was had a great car tonight. Never smoked on that whole first stint. To tell you, it's here's how real easy to get these cards over DJD. All you need is that one percent, little more tape, just one percent, and that'll ruin your whole night. It looks like that's what happened to Hal Beard with on that last stop. Thought he had room to add some tape and uh, matted one percent too much and uh, uh, caused him to win tonight, JD. But tell you what, Hal had a great car tonight. Ran that car up to the front. Uh, did a great job. Just unfortunately, just that one percent got him tonight. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know, you just push it too hard, and uh, and that's what happens. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I haven't mentioned the chat room at all here tonight. Of course, with all the uh, issues that we've been faced with here on ETV, I don't know if this is uh, I don't know if this is a full moon night or what's going on. But uh, I want to say good evening to Danny Gabaldon. Danny always uh, hangs around the ETV chat room over there, and then. Uh, I see uh, Angela Hall, Mrs. Hall's on post, and Nicole Greegate. Uh, good evening, ladies. And Angela, uh, I can see the chat room over there. Just uh, wanted to get in a checkup on Gavin uh, and uh, Gavin Lake, uh, our little man who's uh, had uh, a bout with Wilms tumor cancer back in the uh, Atlanta area. And uh, just want to get a yeah, checkup on him, see how he's doing. And uh, we'll wait for that as it comes across the uh, the chat room there. But in the meantime, back here uh, here on the track, James Greegate leading the pack out here. Dan White, uh, you know what? I, I got a funny feeling Dan White's just waiting for these laps to uh, click off. And uh, just uh, checking down here. Uh, oh, looks like he uh, oh he shaved. Looks like Pop. Now, who's Papa? That I must believe be Dwayne. He was, Oh, the, yeah, that was Grandpa did that, huh? I wonder if Grandpa shaved his head, too. <laughs> Go on the right. Tell us the ball is, look. Tell us the ball. <laughs> All right, uh, got his head shaved by uh, Papa. That's Dwayne Hall today. Ate his supper. Do they still call it supper back there? We call it dinner out here. But, uh. <laughs> You're, You're still confused on that one, too, J.D. It took me a long time to figure out that supper is lunch or something like that or it really confused me for the longest time 
<laughs> I tell you, I think it just depends on where you live in the country, but uh looks like uh, Gavin uh, was doing okay today. Uh looks like he laid off the pain meds a little bit today. And uh and uh Angel says supper is dinner, so uh, <laughs> All right, it's always fun to uh, mix it up here in the chat room. I just, yeah, I gotta, I can't type back in the chat room, guys. I apologize for that, but I gotta keep one one button on one keyboard. My other keyboard is sitting right in front of me here for the laptop that uh, I have the chat machine on. So I've got like three monitors I'm watching here with all different information in it. So, but I tell you what, uh, ETV Studios are uh, pretty technical. Sometimes it's too technical, Tracy, and uh, we have some problems. But uh, I tell you, there's no problem out here on the track. As James Greegate and Dan White clicking them off here, four laps to go here at Chicagoland Speedway, guys. And I'll tell you what, Dan White either wait until the last lap to come around and try to get uh, James Greegate, uh, or uh, or that's just about as all he can give him. But uh, 65 machine uh, into the wall here a little bit. We've only got uh, what uh, looks like about seven cars on lead lap. James Greegate, Dan White, Sean Brown, Kevin Brenz, Jason Riddle, Dave Hoot, still in the top ten, Brian Pace on the lead lap, and that's it. Larry Malkin, first car, a lap down here, and I'll tell you what, uh, over half the field, one lap down off that last caution in lap 65. Yeah, we got four laps to go, J.D., and I tell you, Dan White is right on the back bumper of that James Greegate machine. Trying to do whatever he can to get around him, pulling every trick out of the book he's got. I tell you, you know, part of our issues are our broadcast tonight. Uh, well, I don't want to say the name of the company, but they do uh, rhyme with Bombcast. But uh, I tell you, still working everything. It's going to be a great replay to watch. It's been a really good race. As, uh, I tell you, Dan White just he doesn't seem to be able to get to that bumper of uh, the 7 of James Regate. You bet. Uh, two laps to go here. James Greengate coming down the back stretch. You're going to pick up the white flag on this lap. When that white flag flies, no caution comes after that, and it's game over. Dan White will have one lap to make it happen. And I'll tell you, he's about a car length off the back bumper of uh, James Greengate. And I know James Greengate in that number seven machine. He can make it really wide as they come down the front stretch. Dan White making the move now up on the top side, coming through turn two, guys, heading down the back stretch. Does not have the oomph to get her done. Half a lap to go here. Coming down the back stretch, James Greegate uh, playing the block on uh, that number four machine. Dan White. Dan White just drives it hard into the turn, going around. Dan White, the number two car, going around here in Chicago. James Greegate. James Greegate going to take the win. Sean Brown second, Kevin Brenson third. Dan White going around. Big mistake, Tracy. Tell you what, you just kind of ran out of things to do. Went for it all there at the end. Really dove it into that corner deep, and she just didn't stick to the head. to jump on them brakes a little bit. Come around and damn, to gave the win to James Greegate. Didn't really give it to him. James already had it. But tell you what, what a great attempt to take that uh, lead, J.D. Yeah, and they're all they're all... They're all banging bumpers behind them on that finish, too. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, what a race here tonight. Uh, a lot of strategy being played out. It looked like uh, looked like uh, Dan White and Hal Beardsworth had it in the bag, guys. Had it in the bag. And then, uh, of course, that last segment, Hal Beardsworth, that number three good wrench machine, smoking, steaming up a storm, going down the front stretch uh, quite a few times. Race admins caught him, sent him back to pit road for a one-lap penalty. Untape that machine, and uh, what a what a uh, upset uh, that was for the three machine, Tracy. That number three, I'll tell you what though, he did a great job. Had a fast car tonight and uh, did the best he could, but I'll tell you what, it's just that one percent. You bet. Does uh, that James Greegate burns off whatever rubber left on those rear tires on that number seven hauls on post machine? We're going to go ahead and step away, take a commercial break here. And get ready for the Halls on Post post race show. Boy, that's a mouthful, too. But uh, you're watching live ETV, live. Hey, it's the only choice, dude, so don't go away. We'll be right back.
Gorilla Customs manufactures cockpit simulation controls and performance computers that are innovative and at the highest level of design and application standard. They work hand-in-hand -hand with professionals throughout real-world racing to provide technology and fabrication industry's highest level of unmatched quality. Made in the USA, people. Check them out today. Your place for your highest gaming simulation standard. www.gorillacustoms.com All right, and uh, we are back live here at Chicagoland Speedway. And uh, I'll tell you what, that was quite a race tonight. Uh, caution average usually runs about seven here. These boys getting out of it uh, with only three here tonight. But I'll tell you what, the cautions uh, did create a little bit of havoc out there, left. especially for uh, that number seven machine. And I'm standing down here in Victory Lane with James Grigate one more time down here, my friend. But I tell you what, uh, it almost looked like uh, you were going to go a lap down. You got really, really lucky tonight several times. Yeah, in the end, sometimes things fall your way and sometimes they don't. Tonight, uh, the caution that we needed um, to get us back on the lead lap came out just at the right time and we got the lucky dog. But uh, no, uh, ultimately, if that caution wouldn't have come out, I'd have been interested to see what happened because with all those guys with fresh tires about four seconds ahead of us, if they stayed out for their 10 or 15 extra laps, we were running a second, second and a half faster. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it actually would have played out if they would have gotten us or, or what. But no, I just got to go through and thank my wife, first of all. Uh, she's awesome. Nicole, I love you. And uh, Halls on Post, Accounting and Tax Services. Um, you know, Angela and Dwayne, they, they put this whole thing together and let me go out and run. And man, tonight was just teammates. Um, you know, this is a setup we built um, for the last time we were supposed to run here. And it just all uh, came together. Well, you know, uh, at Dan White there, the last, uh, uh, you know, last few laps back there, kind of sitting back, I kind of knew what was going through his mind. Uh, how often were you looking in that rearview mirror? Oh, just enough to take his line away every single chance I could. Um, I was basically staring at it uh, the entire straightaways on both ends. And once you get into the corner, you really do need to just watch your marks. So, um, yeah, basically that whole last run, um, once we got the lucky dog and then we got, we we're trying to be patient and ride through behind some people and, uh, don't know exactly what happened. A lot of people were fighting for the lucky dog for the next go around, and we got turned up and got damage on the rear, damage on the front. But uh, it didn't seem like it really hurt us that much overall. We were able to go through, and I think more or less the driver was seeing red. Uh, I'm not exactly happy, so drove through the field. You know, did it cleanly, but uh, at the same time, we weren't going to be denied tonight. All right. Well, hey, congratulations on the win tonight. I know you already uh, did your shout outs out there, but. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and throw it on down to Tracy Flip Robinson. He's caught up with the number 65 machine, Sean Brown. Yeah, I caught up with that 65 of Sean Brown. I'll tell you a great race tonight, Sean. How did it go for you? No, it was, it was good. I mean, uh, started way back in the field, and you know, uh, took my time. Car was junk early on, but uh, went in through some scuffs on it and made a few adjustments and. Uh, was real, real good on old tires, and uh, would have liked to have seen it stay green. Probably, depending on how I got on pit road, probably might have had a better chance. But uh, you know, was reeling them in, him and uh, James and Dan, just a little bit there in the closing laps, and got up in the wall, and that that killed my chances. So I was just holding on for third, and then you know, Dan decided uh, he didn't want to finish. So I'll take second. Yeah, Dan, he didn't. He, he gave everything he had on that last corner and just kind of lost it. But tell you what, you did a great job. So like I said, started from the back, just worked your way forward and uh, got out there and got yourself a great finish tonight in second place. Is there anybody you want to thank out there? No, nah, of course. I've got to always thank my teammates, Crossed Up Motorsports, uh, Hal Beardsworth and Donnie Klein. Uh, you know, they throw good setups there to me, and I tweak them to my liking, which... Uh, you know, I like a little looser setup, so I got to do a little work. But uh, they do most of the work, and and uh, I just get the pleasure of driving them. So uh, you know, they they do a great job week in week out. How was really strong tonight. Hated to see him get that uh, smoking penalty, but uh, you know, sometimes it falls your way, sometimes it doesn't. Yep, that's true. There. All right, the, thanks. That's your second place finisher tonight. The number sixty-five of Sean Brown, JD. You bet. And our third place 
finisher tonight, Kevin Brent, who uh, played the patience game tonight and uh, wound up in third place here, but uh, unable to uh, be with us for an interview. What do they call it? Elvis has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I'll tell you what, congratulations to uh, Kevin Brent's uh, for the third place run tonight. I believe uh, Kevin Brent is also the points leader in the Halls on Post uh, Monday Night uh, Madness Series standings, too. So I want to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, the True Gravity Arch Truck Series, Michigan International Speedway, the outlaw Jesse James, David the Big Mouth Bass, your host tomorrow night. And then Wednesday night, join uh, Tracy and I and uh, part-time Wendy at Kansas Speedway for the RSN Team Series. All of it right here live on ETV Live. It's the only choice, dude. But uh, before we get out of here tonight, Tracy, cautions. Only three of them here tonight, seven average. So uh, we're getting out of here with uh, some pretty good stats. Yeah, I tell you what, it really is a great race out there in uh, Chicago tonight. Didn't have the issues we had. And uh tell you what, the guys put, put on a long run there. Caught a few people a lap down, but was able to, Take the win tonight was at number seven of James Regate, even though we got caught up in the caution. But I tell you what, Janie, we got a few people we got to thank before we get out of here. We got to thank True Gravity Arts Design for decorating the RSN website, MTCO Gaming Servers for hosting the best sim around, and tell you about being stable and strong uh, servers out there. NVG Web Hosting for hosting the RSN website for us. Halls and Post for sponsoring the Halls and Post Monday Night Madness series. Tell you what's been a great series going on. Uh, they put one on every year. DB Tech Service sponsoring the Saturday Night Thunder Service. If you have any problems with your computer, get a hold of DB Tech Service. The Arca League Manager for keeping uh, track of all our points. That's our points management software, the Arca League Manager. And the Sim Factor, producing the great game Arca Sim Racing. Uh, get out there and get one and join the guys out here on the track, JD. You've had Exile Racing sponsoring the Sunday Night Shakedown Series. We want to thank the nation itself, RacingNation.net. Jody Johnson, the ETV Live journalist for the RSN Weekly Race Headlines. He also does the weekly power rankings for the uh, Monday Night Series as well. ETV Live executive producer and magic fingers, John Wessling, for all the hard work he does here at ETV Live. And, of course, the track master, Dwayne Hall. Reworks the uh, tracks here for the nation to make them real raceable. And, of course, my co-host on Monday and Wednesday nights, Tracy Robinson, Wendy Bernard of Dragon Motorsports for being in the booth with us. And thanks to all the drivers for some of the best online racing ever seen. And, uh, again, uh, make sure you join ETV Live tomorrow night, Michigan International Speedway for the True Gravity Arts Trucks, and then Wednesday night for the RSN Team Series. This is J.D., the Cowboy Web. We're signing out from Chicagoland Speedway. Thank you.